Now the Generals have already locked down that final playoff spot in the East and will be in Niagara on Thursday to play against the Ice Hawks to open up that first round. But rest assured, they'll still like to come out of here with the W against their historic rivals. For more on tonight, let's send it up to Andy McNamara and Mike Luck. The X factor here is the big boys. Can they be big? You know, you're talking about Scott Lottie. Yeah, he gets in the penalty box a bit, but he's always a candidate for the Gordie Out. Highlights for you. We'll get to them right now. Generals and Niagara in Niagara last night. Here's Scott Lottie. He's going to drop the gloves. Try to lead his team. Not much of a fight, though. It lasted all of six seconds. Sneak up, pardon then. Turn around, shot, goal. Five minutes left in the first. The power play marker makes it 1-1. One, one. Thursday, we can't be making mistakes. We have to manage the game right. And what are those mistakes that the team needs to avoid making against Niagara on Thursday? Well, I don't think we can be soft coverage in our own zone. But before we get to that, Clinton and I have went back and forth with our over and unders. Now, some of you at home may have lost track. I fortunately have been keeping track. So, take a nice little look at... Violence in hockey is not a new story, but what is new in today's game is the manner in which players and coaches are coming to grips with the issue of concussions. Years ago, hockey players were taught to shake off a big hit that may have left them stunned or dealing with a headache. But today, better awareness and medical protocol means concussed players must stay away from the game they love, sometimes for days, sometimes for weeks, and sometimes for months. But as some members of the Oshawa Generals will tell you, it's all part of the game of hockey. Let's say you had a knee injury, but it wasn't quite serious and you were on the fence to play. Would you disclose that to your trainer? I know uh, C.B. Eisman, uh, he played through a playoff game through a torn PCL, but if it's uh, ACL or MCL, I think it'd be uh, a really tough, tough thing to play through. Now, instead of a knee injury, let's say you had a bit of a headache, maybe from a concussion. Would that affect your mentality at all? Would it still be like, you know what, this is a big game, I have to play this game? Five years ago, you get a headache on the ice from a hit, maybe you don't think so much about it. But obviously now with everything that's gone on with players getting concussions and whatnot, I think, yeah, the minute I get hit and I have a headache on the ice, I'm thinking concussion. Mike Green of the Washington Capitals said you've got to make that call. I think at times the protocol for testing concussions, they're just tests. They don't know actually how you feel. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I do. I think, uh, you know, every player is different, so, you know, the test it is just a test, I think but ultimately it comes down to how you feel. If you knew how your life would suffer maybe 20 or 30 years down the line because of the injuries you've had playing hockey, would you look back with any regrets on that? No, absolutely not. Live with no regrets. I've always, I've always said it to myself. But, you know, we, that's a risk you take playing this game. You know, obviously you're going to get injured, you're going to pull a muscle, you're going to strain something, you might even break something, but it's all part of the game. For the game to change, the culture of hockey will have to change. So that the coaches, fans, and players who receive these injuries will understand the seriousness of concussions, the effect it can have on the ice, as well as life away from the rink.